give you that love. All right, guys, it's your host, Frizina. We are here this week with Tulani. Hey, guys, I'm Shai Tulani. I like hats and stuff. So you kind of described your music as like a soul hop. How did you come up with that? And how would you even explain what that is to somebody? The name soul hop is just a genre that I made up because um, for a long time, um, when people ask me what genre I would make, what genre of music I make, I never have an answer. So I just took two of my favorite kinds of music, soul, hip hop, and made it into one word. Even though it's like it's a mixture of soul, hip hop, reggae, and R and B. The hip hop part is like the foundation. I'm not necessarily a rapper. It's just um, it's very it's still influenced us. So I got to give the the hip hop the credit that that it plays in my music. I mean, you've mentioned a lot of genres, and I guess how did you find your sound within all of them? Who who really inspired you? Number one is Bob Marley, number one. Then um, we got Tracy Chapman, um, Bobby Womack, James Brown. Those are the top four. Now, in another interview, you had said that you would describe yourself as even more sensitive, James Brown. What did you mean by that? I don't know if you ever watched a James Brown movie with uh, with Chadwick, but like you know, you, throughout watching the movie, um, you can see that you know James Brown was a tough dude, but at the same time, he had a, like a real sensitive side within his music. And I'm probably more sensitive than that sensitive James Brown. I like to like move around on stage a lot, and James Brown was like the king of that, like yeah. you know. And he brought that energy because, you know, if you notice in my music, uh, I tell stories, but a lot of times they're, they're very simple songs. Mm -hmm. So I don't have, you know, super heavy lyricism, but it's always about the feel. Like you can feel it. And James Brown was all about that feel. And then I feel like sensitive means, you know, a lot of people take it as like, oh, it's like soft and that, it, which it can be. But it's also sensitive, like tapping into any emotion that you feel or um, a place, you know. I don't know if it's yourself gave yourself the moniker or if it was given to you, that African boy. Talk to us about how your heritage has really um, inspired and influenced your music. It was a thing that I felt insecure about, and I was a call when I when I was younger. You know, when I was going to school, um, I went to school um, in a project uh, called uh, All Girl Gardens. And it was all black, but I was the African kid. So it was like, oh, man, that's the African boy over there. And at first it was like something like it felt negative and it was not something positive. So as I grew older, I kind of flipped it and like like took ownership of it and like flipped it and made it something cool and of my own. Um, and my African her heritage plays a huge role in my music because um, my whole life, you know, um, I've been very aware of my culture. Like, for example, um, coming up, my parents didn't allow us to speak English. Um, oh, wow. English is my second language. Okay. The language... The music, the food, the culture, it's like I was here in the States, but I didn't leave. It stayed with me. I don't really think about it so much. I don't think, oh, I'm going to use this thing from Kenya. It's just kind of like because my whole life I couldn't, you know, I couldn't even speak English in the, within the home, within my, to my parents. It was like it was like a thing against the rules. Um, and I'm actually, I didn't understand them, but I'm glad that they did that. So now it comes naturally when I put um, the African influence into my music. What kind of experiences do you like to bring out into your music? What part of you, you were talking about these sensitive parts. What what do you like to bring out in your music? I like to bring out honesty. The more honest I am in my music, the better um, people connect with it. You know, because my music is, is like such an alternative style. Um, you know, people either rock with it or they don't. I like to bring what's inside um, onto paper just by being honest with myself and all the... Um, all the emotions and feelings that I really feel. And um, uh, I don't really sit down and like plan to write a song, just kind of like, you know, sit and then, you know, whatever comes out comes yeah. out. And I truly believe that some of the words that I write come from a higher place. And sometimes it's not just, it's not me. Feel me, girl, what's up? Come feel me, girl, what's up? No game that we ever played. You was calling me your homie just the other day. Okay, bring it to the bed. You be Do you ever have I guess challenges with like writer's block or anything like that or maybe sometimes feeling a little like a challenge with feeling too vulnerable ever? If I sit down with a pen and a notebook something's gonna come out. I, I don't have to like it but something's gonna come out and you know I could go record it or not so writer's block is not a thing for me It's whether I look at the song and I like it or not. I guess how did you find music and songwriting as your outlet and did it always start out as I want to write a song. My expression, I don't think it necessarily started off with songwriting. It, I guess it started off with writing. At one point when I was younger, um, I liked to, um, I made, I used to like draw and make these comic book stories. Aww. 
<laughs> Even then, they were they were Bob Marley influenced because all the all the characters had locks. It was like a a mix of Dragon Ball Z, but they had dread. <laughs> dread. It was funny, but I would I would like to write like stuff like that. So writing has always been a thing for me. And then um, when I discovered I really wanted to do music, and that's when I was able to like um, move it into that direction. At the age of like 15, 16, um, I found a little like commu computer mic in the basement, and I would just like record myself. Um, on songs, which those songs you will never hear in your, in your life because <laughs> they're they're horrible. How would you say your growth has been as an artist? It, it definitely. I'm a person that grows with time. Um, I never. Um, I was I was telling uh, one of my closest friends yesterday, um, uh, who happens to be my girlfriend as well, that I never start off good at anything. I've never just. I've never been one of those people that start off naturally good at anything. I always suck. At anything, I'm I'm gonna just be real. Any anything that I start, so when I started music, I think that I sucked. You know, like my music or just anything that I started. Those recordings. Yeah, <laughs> but I, with development, um, I, like I become, I find, I find what works, how it can work for me, and then get better at it. Like even when I was, um, I remember um, my senior year in high school, um, I decided to, you know, out of all the years. Um, I started a cross country. Never did cross country in my life before. So I sucked bad. And I'm Kenyan, you know. So I sucked at cross country and I was, I'm Kenyan. But like I started, I remember um, it took me about um, 24 minutes to run three miles, which is actually really horrible. It was like. I mean, that sounds good to me. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was bad for, for cross country. But by, by the end of that, season I was able to run three miles in 19 minutes and I got the award for most improved um, athlete so no matter what it is I always start off rough but I'll end up if I have enough time I end up being one of the best a lot of different African um attributes have entered into the black community now yes. with our re-identification I guess. Well I was always made fun of for being African and now everyone wants to be African and wearing their dashikis. How do you feel about this? I look at it more in a positive light than the negative. I, I moved here fairly young um, so you know I figured hey these kids look like me. So I was like you know you know you 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 think that they are you you know, in a way, because to be honest, we look quite alike, you know, <laughs> you know, so um, uh, I, I remember being angry um, that I, I would um, deal with these things and this and that. But I think as I grew older and I also learned the history of of black people in America, I, now I understand why that perspective is the way it was, you know, and to see it beginning to change is actually, my, in my mind, a form of progress. Because now black people are are looking at themselves and saying, hey, this is the continent where my ancestors, you, you know, I'm not saying all black people got a claim to be from Africa, but like, you know, yeah. you can say, hey, this is, this is where my ancestors came from and it's actually pretty cool. It shows like, okay, people are learning about themselves a little bit more. Because that, that stuff is just a boomerang in, in my opinion. It's like, I don't feel bitter feelings about, um, People wearing dashikis, black people in America wearing dashikis, um, or like um, when the whole Black Panther movie came out and everybody was in African clothing. I was like, yes, you know, that's cool because now it's like, that's beautiful. I just got the juice in my hand, no photo. 